Welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Nathan Drinker. I'm Jay Wise. Thanks for spending some of your time with us. As a reminder to all the listeners, besides being all your favorite podcast platforms, Drink of Wisdom is also on YouTube, each show segment available. Uh, head on over and check us out. Like, subscribe, share. We'd appreciate it all. Uh, Cody's on assignment again today, so it's just myself and Drink. What's going on, brother? Let's talk some sports, baby. You know what it is. Hey, look here. Well, you know, another another beautiful Saturday on the Drink of Wisdom show, you know. And um, let's get into it. You know what I'm saying? We see what they don't and say what they want. Let's roll, baby. We we absolutely do. Let's 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 do it. In episode 31, the Jazz keep rolling, Lucas frustration mounts, and the, the Deshaun Watson thing. Yeah, we've got that covered from every angle. But we begin with the Bucks Pelicans last night, in which Pelicans uh, led by upwards of 30 points throughout that game. Bucks made a little run late. They ended up making it somewhat respectable, uh, but it w- didn't wind up being enough. Uh, Pelicans win their second straight, led by Brandon Ingram's big night. But they also got big nights from Alonzo uh, Ball and Eric Bledsoe from the perimeter. Uh, the Bucks led by 38 points from Giannis. Uh, they're 11 and seven at the moment. Pelicans seven and 10. All right, drink. Break this down. What happened in this one? <laughs> well, I think you said it best. Um, here's the deal. We had some guys that was on the back of milk cartons that actually, you know, showed up last night. Your, your boy won Eric Bledsoe uh, by far was the, the first candidate where I said, oh, OK, um, this is quite interesting. Uh, and then, you know, Brandon Ingram, Brandon Ingram is, is, is to, to me. I know a lot of people like Zion. I think Brandon Ingram is the alpha on this team. I think he's the number one. Um, he has shown to be uh, dependable when you need him. Um, I, and I've been the first and foremost to tell people when it went down, how it went down in L.A., Brandon Ingram should have been the player that stayed, not called Kuzma, whatever, whatever. Um, now we see, you know, in the future why. But last night was – it was one of those games for the Bucs where you, you say when when Von Don Von Donovich didn't make it to the team when he ended up signing with the Hawks, I thought last night was like one of those glaring uh games where you was like they could have used some more shooting last night. Uh because Giannis, for whatever reason, Giannis is just not he's not looking like the two-time MVP. He's not looking like the guy that was on the, you know. Uh, trajectory to be one of the, the, the best to ever do it. He, he just don't look like the same guy right now. Um, I don't know if it's the free throw shooting. I don't know if it's just people that caught on to the better way to defend him because you're not going to shut him down. He, he He's too athletic. His skill set is too, too elite to shut him down. But I think the way teams are playing him is, is pretty effective. You think about this. Last year, the year before, how many times would you turn on the TV and Giannis did drop 35 and he dropped 40 and he make it look effortless because he can take two steps from half court to the rim and ain't nothing no anybody can do about it. Don't matter how good of defense you was playing, it was, it was just very hard to stop him. This year, as I looked at him last night, yeah, he ain't looking at his box office. And I'm not saying it's to- totally on him why he's not looking like that. Maybe booting holes are not putting them in the right spots. Maybe I don't know. But what I do know is this. You went out there and you got smoke checked by the Pelicans, and we were still trying to figure out what the hell the Pelicans are doing. Like how, how they're gonna piece this together. When it when you got Drew Bledsoe, I mean uh, my bad, Eric Bledsoe. When you got Eric Bledsoe out here, you um, you know, that's a pun, and I know people that follow Bledsoe. But when you got Eric Bledsoe out here looking like not only will he be all defensive player, he might just make enough shots to be uh, considered for an all-star. That, that's not it. That's not it, Milwaukee. I'm sorry. Now, as I broke down the end of the game scoring, uh, I know Bledsoe was in the 20s, Ingram was in the 20s, Zion was in the 20s, and then Lonzo. Now, Lonzo, the, the problem with Lonzo is he took a lot of shots. In the first quarter, like, not even the first quarter, probably the first seven minutes of action, Lonzo had put up about seven to eight shots already. I don't know if that's a recipe for winning, but, you know, props to the man being aggressive, but I, I don't think you're going to be able to maintain it. Lonzo can't be taking that many shots over the game. 
if it's anybody that should be taking those shots, it's Brandon Ingram. Uh, if you're not going to let J.J. Reddick shoot, then it should be Brandon Ingram. Um, I don't understand why Lazo was taking so much shots. Either way, to get to this segment, I think the Pelicans, if they can maintain what they did, I think that's a pretty pretty decent recipe. You Because you have Adams. And I like this is something that they did last night that I thought was very smart. They knew they was playing the Milwaukee Bucks, which is usually a tall team. Usually when you got Giannis and Lopez and then you throw in another a body in there, you, you're going to have problems shooting over that, that, that length. We know Zion is probably going to be the smallest five in most games that he plays. I mean, the only other guy that I can say right off the top of my head that he might not be as small is um, Montrez Harrell of the Lakers. Everybody else, for the most part, he's going to be smaller than the, that five of that team using. And what I like what New Orleans did is now they got him playing majority of the four and Steven Adams plays the five. Now, when Steven Adams is out of the game, of course, Zion is considered the five, but when they do that little four or five matchup, it's good because Steven Adams know who Steven Adams is. He ain't out here trying to put up 30 and all that. No, no, no. He's going to rebound. He's going to play defense, and he's going to give you that, that body in the five slot that you need, that toughness. That allows Zion to do what Zion do. So I like what New Orleans had going on with that. I thought that was good, and I thought that gave Milwaukee problems um, with, um, with, their, with their size, like I said. Um, but at the end of the day, not to drag this out, I like what I seen with the Pelicans. I just don't know if it's real. I don't know if we can take a whole lot from it. Get, give me another, you know, month sample of this, and then I might have a different um, opinion on this. And um, as far as Milwaukee go, I don't know what's going on there, but they don't seem to have that spark that we're used to them having in the last two to three years. They used to pop, pop. Even with your boy Bledsoe, as much as we give them crap about how Bledsoe wasn't playing so well, they still, to me, had some type of spark. Um, you even got, the crazy thing is, you got Militant playing better this year. You actually getting the productivity you want out of Militant, and still it's just kind of flat. It's like, man, I left my drink out all night, and, you know, it just lost all this. Shit. I don't know. It's, I don't know what it is, but when I watch them, I just don't get the same enthusiasm and excitement um, out of the books. So I don't know. Maybe you got something better for for the listeners and the watchers, but overall, I think the Bucks got to find something, some type of motivation, something to give them their juice back. And I, if the and the, I hope the Pelicans can maintain what we seen last night, that will vote well for their future. I think, yeah, I think your assessment right there of the Bucks and the, I think, I think there is some stagnation that is taking place right now. I think that the last two seasons they've pretty much been the, the best team regular season wise, pretty much wire to wire. Uh, and this season it's, it does, it does seem a little flat. It does seem stagnant. And uh, the overall lack of energy that I'm seeing is, is, is concerning right now, even though they're, I mean, they're 11 and seven, they're in, you know, pretty good position, but I think we all, we all believe that this is still a team that we still, we, we, we got to see this team in the finals at some point, we got to see Giannis in the finals. And I think it's it's similar to what we kind of you know nailed down last year. Is there's nobody on this team who, or nobody like that's playing big time minutes that, you know, brings that extra energy outside of Giannis. And we I think we all agree that you need, you know, that alpha mentality, that Marcus Morris, that Marcus Smart who can come in here and light a fire on a guy and give energy. A Montrez Harrell, you know, you can throw him in there as well. Um, I think maybe I think you know, Bobby Portis might be that guy, you know, that can provide that toughness and that energy. And I think, um, you know, he's a, I think, I think he's a guy I've liked for a long time, even back to his days at Arkansas, I believe it was. Uh, I don't think he got a whole lot of minutes last night, but I, I think he's a guy that can be a factor for them. Uh, but it, it may take, what it may take is maybe, a, you know, you, you talk about the, um, that uh, Bogdanovich trade that ultimately ended up falling through. And that may be a big deal. I think some of the depth that they were able to keep, you know, I don't, I think that I think that's good for them because they were gonna they were gonna stand to lose Devin Chincho and a you know a couple other guys I believe, um, but it it may take another in season move to you know provide that extra life and that jolt of energy because they just they just look like a team that 
right now they look like they've peaked. And one thing, one thing is absolutely certain. They've forgotten how to defend. Uh, you know, you talked about before, um, before the shutdown in March or whatever, like, you know, after, after we came back to the bubble time, they, they completely forgot how to defend and they just don't. And it's, you know, we, the, the book on Milwaukee for the last couple of years, uh, especially since, you know, Brooke Lopez is in the middle is they'll give up threes, but they'll make sure that you don't get anything easy in the paint. So it's pretty much if you, you know, it's a live and die by the three uh, mechanic. Now it's just they give up they give up buckets everywhere. They still can't guard the three, and even inside the paint they're not they're not all that um you know proficient at, at stopping anything in there. And then of course last night was a perfect storm because the Pelicans just went bonkers from three. I believe they tied a franchise record of 21 threes. They were eight for 13 at the start. Uh, I believe in the second and third quarters the deficit was upwards of 30 points. Milwaukee made a late push in the third. I believe they went on a 23 run. They got when they made it nine with like a minute or so to go in the third, it looked like they had a chance. Uh, but the Pelicans, they scored the last five of the third and they, you know, ended up pushing that lead out. You know, when it, it's, it's Pelican, the, the, the Bucks just, it's something they do from time to time. They just, they just don't look prepared and they come out flat. And anytime you do that, you risk getting embarrassed. This is, this is something that we talked about in the bubble last year. This is something we talked about in the first round of playoffs when Orlando just put the smack down on them in the first game of that first round series. Uh, you know, at, at some point you just, you, you, you're not, you're not as good as you think you are. You know, some of it may be, Oh, we have the MVP. Oh, we have an all-star. We have holiday. We have Lopez. We, they got, they got all the talent in the world. They, that still remains, but you come, you got to come out there with the right attitude and focus. And that seems to be lacking far too often. And that, that has to get turned around. And Mike Budenholz has got to fix that. You know, in addition to, you know, some of the defensive things and some of that effort, uh, you give up this many threes. I mean, it's just it's just inexcusable for a team, you know, of this caliber. For the, for the Pelicans, you know, we talk about things, you know, I think you tried to, you know, sucker me into a bet a couple weeks ago. I will. I got one for you right now, and I know you won't take it. Uh, Drew Holiday, excuse me, excuse me, Eric Bledsoe and Lonzo Ball combined to go 14 for 27 from Lee, from three last night that's not happening again this year those two will not for the rest of this season make that many threes at that level of efficiency i'm here I, I'll, I'll bet whatever on that right now um but and and the concerning thing i think if you're new orleans because this was i mean this was a whale of a performance but in the end when you look at it i mean it took that's got to be a career high for both of them from that distance it took career high performances from, you know, predominantly two non shooters to ultimately just, you know, squeak you across the finish line. Um, so I don't, I, I'm, a, I'm still a little uncertain on the Pelicans and ultimately what they'll be. They don't, they don't really defend all that much either. I think for the, you know, I think Stan Van Gundy pointed out, you know, for the first, for the first half and, you know, into the third, they defended well, but then the Bucks just all of a sudden got hot and they couldn't, and once they got hot, they couldn't put out that fire. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little, the Pelicans, I don't know how much different they are from last season. I think now you've, you know, I think their shooting overall was a concern. Now you've got even less shooting because Reddick wasn't in there. And I don't know if he's, you know, in their plans as we progress, you know, really, I think it's, you know, it's Josh Hart can shoot. Of course we know Ingram, Ingram can score from anywhere. He's just not what I would say. He's a, you know, a first class shooter, but he can do that. Uh, but your two guards out there, that's this isn't their game. I mean, Lonzo Ball can't shoot, you know, d d despite what we saw from him last night. That's just not his track record. Eric Bledsoe, his track record isn't all that impressive either. Although for this season, you got to give him credit. He has shot the ball well. He's about 41 percent from three. But is that sustainable? This is this is a real good start. But it, but, you know, he has a tendency to not to not be able to shoot. So it took this much of a, a, this big a performance to get this win, which is a great win. Uh, but I think, I, and I don't think we ever thought that this team would struggle scoring, but both teams had the same issue last night. I mean, 131 points and 126 points. They got, both teams have to, you know, fix some things defensively. And the Pelicans, they got a, it's an uphill climb, even though, you know, we're only about a quarter of the way through the season because they're still second to last place in the Western Conference. So they got to, they got to get hot and they got to get hot quickly. Um, obviously both teams, you know, with the, pretty much the point guard swap with, uh, you know, Holiday being a buck. Bledsoe being a Pelican, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, but uh, 
I, I think both teams, both teams have some concerns right now. And um, I, I, don't, I don't think this for the, for the Bucks, this level of performance isn't sustainable if they want to make an NBA finals run. And obviously the Pelicans, they need more of this or something close to this, or they're not, they won't be in the playoffs again either. And we'll be, you know, it'll be another disappointing early for Zion. Oh, by the way, one, one, last, one final point. When you, when I start off the lead in, we're talking about Ingram, Ball, and Bledsoe. That's pre- that that is impressive by itself because I didn't even get to Zion, who was he was pretty he was pretty good last night. But I do I do agree with you, and it's almost a similar thing back to I think the Duke days. Zion was clearly the best player and the you know the most you know phenom and got all the highlights. But R.J. Barrett, I always thought was kind of the key and would be the last type of shot type guy. I think it's the same situation here in New Orleans. 